So first up, we're going to take a look at converting between exponential and logarithmic forms here. This is good ongoing practice. For that first one, you notice our base is 9, so it's log base 9. Log always equals the exponent, so it's going to equal 2, therefore it has to be log base 9 of 81 equals 2. Once we have that pattern down, the rest go fairly easy, I hope. The one thing that you'll see here is number 2 as a possible exception for that. Number 2 is following up on what we learned brand new yesterday. Yesterday we saw that if the base is 10, we don't need to write that base in. So if you wrote for number 2, log base 10 of z equals a, well technically correct, that's kind of like saying 1x instead of just saying x. We do want to get moving in the direction of writing it simpler each time. So if you wrote log base 10 of z, make a note to yourself there that you don't have to write the base 10. Then for number 4, remember that the base of the logarithm is the base of our exponential. So the 5 is the number we're raising to the power. Log always equals the exponent. So since this log equals 3, it's got to be 5 to the power of 3. And then it equals whatever the other number is, which is 125. And again, follow that same pattern. Number 5 again follows up on that work from yesterday where we don't write the base in. That means the base is 10. So that was the same as log base 10 of 5 equals t, so it ends up being 10 to the t equals 5. All right, having done those, practicing going between exponential and logarithmic form, hopefully you're actually getting really good at those now. So now we can start taking a look at how do we calculate those logarithms, again following up on yesterday's notes that we took down. I'd like you please to go ahead and calculate each of these four values. So following up on the notes from yesterday, in order to do number one, log base 8 of 16, it becomes a log divided by a log. That's using change of base formula. So if you're looking in your notes, that's what you're looking for, change of base formula. The base is always the number that goes on the bottom. So that means since the 8 is on the bottom here, the 16 must be the number that goes on the top. So it's log 16 divided by log 8 here. Go ahead and make sure that you can get the right number out of that as well. You should be getting an answer of 1.333. If you're having trouble getting that, of course, make sure to get help so that I can help you with that. One little detail here, you notice I'm getting three decimals. That's just because we're told here to round to the nearest thousandth. So it just happens to be what this one's telling us to round to. All right, once you're able to get that one, go on to two, three, and four. All right, then we check number three. For number three, we're figuring out what log of 50 is. Notice here there's no base written. There's two different ways you can do this. Some of you are going to be looking at and saying, okay, so this is really log base 10, therefore I'm going to have to do log 50 divided by log 10. But if you do that, you'll get the same thing as if you just did log 50. The reason is because log 10 equals 1. This log 50 is already just in log form. We don't need to change the base. It's already in the right base, so you don't need to use the change of base formula with it. And then finally, for number 4, we end up doing log 128 divided by log 4, so we end up getting 3.5 there. Yes, exactly 3.5 for that one. All right, now into your notes, I'd like you to please add this information on the difference between exponential growth and exponential decay. All right, so we're going to be practicing this idea of the exponential decay and the exponential growth here in a little bit. Uh, just a quick clarification, what it's really meaning here, you notice b is just whatever number is raised to the power of x. If b is between 0 and 1, that means that we're multiplying by like a fraction or a decimal. When you multiply by those fractions or decimals, you get smaller numbers, right? That's why our values are decaying. They're getting to be less each time as we go over. It's growing if we're multiplying by a number bigger than 1. So like if you multiply by 2, your values are getting bigger. That's why it's growth. All right, now we're going to do some graphing practice here, and we'll actually then bring the vocabulary in at the end of each of those. So I'd like you to please graph this equation on your own paper. y equals 6 times 1 third to the x minus 8. 
And yes, I would suggest starting by thinking about what's the parent function, what's the transformations, where's the asymptote, and then making the graph from there. So our parent function here is y equals 1 third to the x. Then the 6 and the 8 then must be transformations. So the 6 ends up being a vertical stretch by a factor of 6. That's actually the trickiest transformation for us to deal with here. It's actually going to affect the first point, as we're going to discuss here in a moment. And then the minus 8, that's a shift down 8. Now, since that is shifting at down 8, that affects the asymptote. So that's why our asymptote's at y equals negative 8. Once you know that, draw it. Draw that dotted line in to represent the asymptote. So now the tricky part with this one is dealing with the 6, because when I do a vertical stretch here, notice it didn't change the location of my asymptote. My asymptote was still at negative 8. That's because the asymptote is normally at 0, and 6 times 0 is still 0. But unlike other graphs we've done, like our parabolas and our absolute value and all them, this one doesn't start at 0 for the first point. The first point normally actually starts up here at 1. Because it starts at 1, that does change with the 6. So our first point is not going to be up 1. Our first point is going to be up 6. So we count up 6 from the asymptote for that first point. And then from there, we're going to use that 1 third. So in other words, we're going to multiply this height by 1 third to go to the right. And we're going to divide it by 1 third, that is multiply it by 3, as we go to the left. So fill in those points now if you haven't already. All right, so now let's put in the rest of those points. So right now, I'm at a height of 6. As I go to the right, I am going to be multiplying by 1 third. What is 1 third of 6? Well, 6 times a third, that's the same as 6 divided by 3. It's 2. So our next point here is going to be at 2. And then the point after that is going to be one-third that height. One-third of two. That's like two divided by three. So technically, that's actually at two-thirds. Although, if you didn't know that it was going to be at two-thirds, you could have even done it visually. You could have said, okay, this one's this high. One-third of that looks like it's about this high. And you could applaud the point that way as well. Then... If I'm multiplying by a third on the right side, that means that on the left side, I'm dividing by a third. Dividing by a third is the same as multiplying by three. So if this point's currently at six, what's six times three? Eighteen. Which conveniently enough, just barely fits on our graph and grid. What a shock, right? Wonder why I chose us to go down eight. Okay. Then, of course, that's the only point that we're going to be able to fit on that side because, of course, everything else is way off the graphing grid. So then draw your curve in through those points. And then we can deal with the one new question as of today, which is, is it exponential growth or decay? This one, yes, is decay. Now, how do we know it's decay? There's a couple indicators. One, if we go back to our notes, it says, if that b value, in other words, the number raised to the power of x, is between 0 and 1, it's decay. And notice here our b value is 1 third. That's one way you could know. Another way is visually. As we're going to the right here, notice we're getting closer to the asymptote. That is, the amount that we have is reducing. It's diminishing over time. Therefore, it's decaying. All right, we're going to do one more graph here together as a group. All right, so then last one, I'd like you to please graph this. y equals 1 half times 4 to the x. And again, start by thinking about what's the parent function, what are the transformations, where's the asymptote. And then start making your graph from there. So just checking in to make sure that you're heading in the right direction here. Uh, first of all, your parent function. The parent function is whatever is raised to the power of x. So your parent function here is going to be 4 to the x then that means that the 1 half is a transformation. Now, we're multiplying by a half here. Every time we multiply, it's a stretch or a compression. Anytime we add or subtract, that's a shift. So we know this is a stretch or a compression. If I multiply by a half, which is it? Stretch or compression? Compression, yeah. Because 
If I multiply by a half, it's making it smaller. That's compressing it. Now, since my only transformation is a vertical compression by a factor of one half, that doesn't change the asymptote. The only thing that changes an asymptote is shifting it up or down. So your asymptote's going to be at zero. Draw that in first. And then we need to know where that first point goes. So normally our first point's at one. It's not going to be at one in this case, though. Well, what am I multiplying my height by? What's my vertical stretch or compression? It's the one half. So that vertical stretch or compression is what changes that first point. And so instead of starting up at one, I start up at a half. Now from here, we can multiply by four on the right and divide by four on the left to get the rest of those points. So go ahead and do that. So from that one half now, I now am going to use the parent function, which is 4 to the x. That means multiply my height by 4. So 1 half times 4, that's going to give me 2. Then 2 times 4 gives me 8. 8 times 4 would give me 32. That's way off my graphing grid, so I'm not going to plot that one. So that's all of them I can plot on the right side. On the left side, then, where it's decreasing, I want to plot at least two points. So then as I go to the left, I'm dividing by 4. Well, 1 half divided by 4, that already gives me 1 eighth. These get very small very quickly. Are we going to plot that on, like, wall maps? All right, so then once you've got those points plotted, go ahead and draw your curve in that goes through them. And then having that curve, the last question here for us to deal with, is it exponential growth or is it exponential decay? And in this case, growth or decay? Growth. Growth. And again, how do we know there's two different ways? One, notice the number that's raised to the power of x. It's bigger than 1. So since the 4 is bigger than 1, that means it's growth. Visually, you can see the impact of that. As I'm heading to the right, you notice my graph is increasing. So as the x values increase, the graph is growing. So that's why it's exponential growth there as well.